Unique views. You know the old joke about the honeydew list? It's an oldie but a goodie because all of us do have a honeydew list, even when you're the honey that's often doing the work. So this morning we're very happy to welcome Brack Biggs. He has the honeydew service here in town, and he's going to not only let you know about something that very likely you're facing or about to face mm -hmm. at your house and what to do about it, but let you hear how he can help you with that very long list that we all have. Good to Thank see you. you. Good to be here. Thank you for having 40 us. years, is that right, of general contract? that you did? Well, I've been in Chattanooga for about 40 years. I've been a licensed general contractor for a good chunk of that. The, I used to build houses locally, uh, working with some local companies. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I've done other projects on gyms and things like that. But uh, for the last six years, we've had the honeydew service, which I'm a general contractor and we can do anything you need within the house. Uh, it's a one-stop shop. We have electricians, plumbers, Whatever you need to be done in the house, whether it's just moving pictures around mm -hmm. or moving furniture around, right. all the way up to bathroom kitchen remodels, uh, attic con basement conversions, uh, whatever you need. Let me ask you about the small job because I think, you know, some industries grow mm -hmm. and some people don't have the manpower, I guess, to come and do a quote small job. Mm -hmm. It has to be a certain uh, level. So, yeah, if you're um, an older person, let's just say living mm -hmm. by yourself and you need some help with the way your doors are hanging, they're not quite aligned, right? Mm -hmm. They can call you. Absolutely. Anything that's small within the house, when we come in, if it's a honeydew list, uh -huh. we'll create a set of scopes. And if there's things that you want us to do right away, mm -hmm. we can do them right then. Or if there's something that you want us to kind of space out and do next year, we right. can do that as well. The biggest thing is, especially with older folks, we find that as we go in and do smaller jobs for them, mm -hmm. we're able to build a relationship. And that's right. really what we want to do. We right. want to build relationships with our clients. And so as we're able to do the smaller jobs, they trust us with the bigger jobs, and then we move on to other things. But if it's always small jobs, we're glad to do that. Well, here, here's the proof that's in the pudding about that philosophy, because it really is true. So, of course, you could have come on today and just talk about what they can do to help you with that long list. Mm -hmm. You're a big believer in education. Mm -hmm. uh, you want your homeowners to understand really how their house works big believer in prevention. Mm -hmm. So you're wanting to kind of give us some tips to keep those carpenter bees at bay and mm -hmm. let us know why there's such a problem. Well, I have this conversation probably 15 to 20 times a week when I'm going to folks' house and we're looking at the exteriors and what they're having challenges with. Unfortunately, sometimes things have been let go too long. Yeah. And as, as a consequence, those systems have broken down. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, what we're gonna be talking about today is carpenter bees. Uh, carpenter bees are an invasive species. They used to be solitary, and so you'd go into your house and you might see one little hole here or there. And what carpenter bees do is they'll come in, they'll find a wood space that's good for them, they'll dig a hole, create a burrow, and leave a larvae. And then that larvae will pupate, and then it'll go ahead and grow and go on to do better, great things. Right. The challenge is, over the last five, six years, we've had more social coming in and those solitaries have been displaced. So now you're seeing holes that'll have two, three, four, five, six pupa in them and then that just creates swarms. You were telling me that this first began to rear its ugly head in the East Brainerd area mm -hmm. of town. I used to live out that way and mm -hmm. that very thing happened to us. Mm -hmm. um, and then you said that sometimes the because when they lay the larva, the woodpeckers like them. Exactly, what you'll see is you'll see a single hole. But then after a while, you might see a dot, dot, dash sequence. Well, what happens is the woodpeckers absolutely love the larvae. So they'll come in and they'll hear and they'll start trying to tap down the line to try to find them. Oh. Or they'll find one that has four or five, six burrows in it. And then they'll go ahead and, and eat those and that's what's leave the holes. Okay, so this that you brought with you today, these are purchasable at stores around town. Is mm -hmm. that right? And what, how do you use them? What do you do? Well, these are just a couple of examples. There's lots of them out there. You can get them at Ace. Lowe's, Home Depot. Sometimes you can find them at produce markets. Linda's, I think, has some. So the biggest challenge that you've got is when you get them is placing them in the right place. And to do that, you've got to understand the behavior of the bee. First of all, the bee is looking, they're lazy. They're, they're a piece of work. <laughs> they're lazy, and so they're looking for a hole that already exists. So they want to go in there and leave their own pupa. Okay. Sometimes, especially the more social ones, will want to come in and they'll leave two, three different kinds of uh, larvae, two, two, three different kinds of bees will leave their larvae in there. Okay. So when they do that, they're hunting for that hole. And the way they do it is they'll start at ground level, they'll start traversing back and forth, looking for that hole. They do it in a grid pattern, very instinctually smart. Okay. So if you have these traps, but you have them set very high, especially above the wood level, 
they're not going to help you that much because okay. by the, the, they'll either find a spot that they want to go into lower or they'll find another hole and that's not really going to help you. Okay. Now you, it can help if you have a large group of holes and you try to put one around it, it might bring them in, but they're still going to, once they are birthed out the hole, they're going to come back and forth and do that traverse. Okay, so let's give a visual. You were saying that like on the eve of your house, the mm -hmm. fascia and the... Soffit. On the eve of your house, this is fascia. Okay. This is soffit. All right, so would you put this on the soffit side? You could. That's a possibility. But what I would do is put it down on ground level. If you took one of like these... literally on the ground? On the ground. Put a block and then have that set on top. Or you could suspend them from a deck. The, cha the thing is, if they're twisting or turning in the wind, the bees won't go in them. They've okay, got to be stabilized. So make them stationary. Mm -hmm. okay. So for instance, what you could do with this one, if you wanted to, you could put a piece of wood on it, screw it on top, and then take that and screw it underneath an edge of a deck. That would be very helpful. All right. And How many do you need? Well, I would get one for every corner of your house and then leave it sitting there. Uh, if you can have one on facing on each face at each corner, which might be eight on a typical house, okay. it's a little bit of money that you're going to spend, maybe a hundred and Forty, yeah. 120 to 150 dollars but if you hire somebody like me to come in and do the repair you're talking about thousands of dollars all right so let's say that you, this one makes more sense to me so let's say that you do that and the lazy little suckers go in there mm -hmm. then what happens to them well they go in there and then there's a, just a trap sequence they fall down and they can't get out so then they just they die just through attrition okay. so you do have to empty these occasionally about once every one or two months depending on what you're your, your challenges are. Uh -huh. If you have, now they do have sticky ones that are used for wasps mm -hmm. and you can hang those up, but typically those don't work with carpenter bees. Okay. A lot of times people confuse carpenter bees with bumblebees. Right. Carpenter bees are very different. Mm -hmm. uh, they are usually a little bit bigger. They usually have a shiny belly or they don't have as much fur on them as a bumblebee. They'll chase you. And they'll, they can be, they'll chase you, but they're just looking to see where you're going. They're not aggressive. They're very actually docile. Okay. And the males don't even have stingers. The females are the only ones that can sting. Okay. But as long as you don't aggressively try to swing at them, they will, they'll leave you alone. I can't believe that you gave all of your time today to teach us how to go buy a rather inexpensive kit mm -hmm. uh, to keep you from having to be the one to come and charge us a lot of money. But you, that's, that's kind of your belief that you don't want to really make is. people throw their money away. I genuinely believe that if people understand the systems of their house, and I spend a, probably half of every visit, I spend just educating folks on what their system is working on, the problem with their system, so that they can see the issue. The challenge is a lot of folks are a little embarrassed because they mm -hmm. don't automatically know about their house. I'm not embarrassed because I don't know how to do the news right. because it's not my primary job. Right. They shouldn't be embarrassed about their house. Right. So if they understand their house and they understand how they work, then when we come in and do the work, they appreciate what we're doing at a much higher level. All right, let me show you how you can get in touch with them because if you're looking to do a bathroom remodel, great, call them. If you just need a heavy bookcase uh, move from one room to another, mm -hmm. call them for that too because what they want is to help you in the way you need it. So their phone number is 843-4663. You can find out more at honeydoservice.com. And before I let you run, how far away can you travel? Like, do you go to like Hamilton County? North We're all throughout Georgia? the county. We go up to South Pittsburgh, Jasper. We'll go up to Cleveland and we okay. go all the way down to Dalton. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Appreciate you coming. back after this. I see firsthand good folks like my parents worry about their livelihoods after being injured. If you've been injured through the negligence of another, let me put our firm's blue collar roots to work for you. It's personal to you and it's personal to me. What a mark key. The new 2023 GMC Sierra AT4X is equipped to conquer the great outdoors or 